what happened to that crack baby from the 80s that lived in 13 different foster homes and was diagnosed with CP? There was an article written in the Denver Post in the 80s that read many sleepless nights for a baby born addicted to crack cocaine. In the 80s, there were studies that showed that a crack baby most likely would follow the same paths as their biological parents. Early on, I used to think, what made me different than the statistic? When I was eight years old, I was adopted by my adoptive parents after living in 13 different foster homes. They helped me to discover who I am today. Without them, I don't know where I would have been. I often hear stories about my biological mother and what it was like for her to give birth to her third child born addicted to drugs. Both wonder, how do I feel about it? I feel that she did the best that she could do. The story is about how she knew she was having her third child born addicted to drugs. So she wrapped me up in a blanket after giving birth, hopped back on the city bus to go home and hide away until social services could place me in the foster care. After living in foster care, 13 different foster homes, and it being so difficult for foster families to take care of me, I was adopted. When I was adopted, it was a very happy time in my life. No more constant moving, and I was about to have a family of my own. But life, was so hard. I, I was only reading on a second grade reading level by the time I graduated fifth grade. Homework that took most kids a half an hour took me four, but life got better. As I graduated high school, I had the opportunity to go to Johnson & Wales, almost on a full scholarship. While I, at Johnson & Wales, I began to work on my business. And through the process of working on my business, I came up with the idea to start Food for Good. Food for Good is a mobile soup kitchen that gives food to people in need. We're also a traditional food truck that uses its profits to fund our nonprofit site. Every $5 spent on our food truck can provide two meals to someone else in need. But the process of starting the Food for Good truck wasn't easy. We had trouble finding funding, and we had trouble building out our truck. But through crowdfunding campaigns and private donors, we were able to purchase our truck. Once we got the money, there were still more struggles. Struggles in finding contractors to do the work. Struggles waiting on the IRS to give us a 501c3. But we got the river. This past summer, I had the opportunity to do the great food truck race on the Food Network. It's a dream come true for anybody who studied culinary arts to see their face on the Food Network. <laughs> After the Food Network and not winning Gone Home Week 2, I still had the dream to open up my food truck. So I saved up some money and the rest of my funding that I had got. And I purchased a truck. Over this past summer and spring, I spent time building up my food truck that is actually in front of Trinity Rep today. 
Macron. Just, just like the truck outside, me and the truck has a lot in common. It was an un, unwanted 22-year-old truck that had 3,000 miles on it and needed a whole lot of work. But it was transformed into something new and beautiful to help the community of Providence. We are going to be the first nonprofit food truck opening up in Rhode Island. We hope that the truck goes out and it feeds many people who's dealing with the issue of hunger. We want this model to be replemented throughout the United States. We believe there are people who have, who can afford to purchase a meal for someone else by purchasing their own meal. And through that model, we believe in years to come, there'll be multiple food for good trucks. For me, I could only imagine what it was like for my biological mother to put food on the table for some of my other siblings. And having the opportunity to work on both sides of the food system, working in hotels and at food pantries and mobile food pantries and soup kitchens, I have seen the opposite ends of the scale that most will never see. And through that vision, I was able to launch the Food for Good Truck. See, it doesn't matter where your life is going. It doesn't matter where you came from. It matters where your life is going. And if you have the opportunity to take a journey like I do, please take the journey. Never know where that journey might take, might take you. And through that path, you'll meet great people. Through the process of being an entrepreneur, I have met so many people who have helped me with my business. And I give the same support to other up-and-coming entrepreneurs. Anything is possible. If you ask some of my mentors and some people I know, when I purchased an old 1994 truck with 3,000 miles on it to start food for good, some of them might have said, you're crazy. That truck isn't going to work. But through hard work and dedication, I'm able to make the dream come true. And here I am today, getting ready to launch Food for Good at the end of the month. Thank you. I want to thank Sol for giving me the opportunity to tell my story to you guys. Thank you.